Freak Easy. He is also one of the co-founders of Who Could Dome at the Burning Man proper. Ladies and gents, give it up for Minimo. Hey guys. Hey, hey, hey. How's it going? Oh my god, this is so terrifying for me to tell you right now. Um, I was sitting here listening to people talk, and it sounds like we're all saying the same thing. So, you know, I made my notes and had all these bullet points and things to talk about, and I'm hearing them from everyone. So, it's cool because we all had this shared experience through our efforts to increase our community in our own Birmingham camps and homes. So, um, Maybe I'll just tell you a little bit of history about myself and what I've been doing with Burning Man um, for the past 19 years. Um, I started out going as a tourist. Um, my older brother was um, um, one of the people who created Media Mecca at Burning Man, and um, he was also in charge of theme camp placement and mapping out the fire. So I went to check out what my brother was doing at Burning Man, and I was like, holy shit. This was in 1997, there were 6,000 people there and it seemed exactly like it is now. Because you can't tell a perspective of the fire. 6,000 people looks like 70,000 people. And it was that much of an amazing experience even back then um, to us. Um, so me and my three friends from Chicago who had heard about Burning Man kept on going back. And after about my 10th year going there, um, I decided, <sighs> I should see what's going on at home. You know, I always went to Burning Man with two friends because I didn't want to. I didn't want to go to Burning Man. I wanted to go to Burning Man and get something out of it and bring it back home. Just like what Jenna was saying, go there, be inspired, come home and make your home, your environment a better place. And um, so, after going to the Burning Man and getting that kind of like free experience and that feeling of acceptance that I enjoyed so much. It wasn't enough once a year, so I decided to try to do this at home. And this was after 10 years of running. So I looked around, I got on the local list. I didn't even know there was a list. And um, I didn't even know there was other bears. I thought it was just me and my three friends for the past 10 years. And um, well, 2004, 2005, I think there was a camp called Bob Camp that showed out of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Showed up out of nowhere, and I was like, oh, my brother, oh, I think oh, yeah. And he was like, oh, there's some Chicago people at Burning Man. I'm like, really? I thought it was just me and my two friends. And I was like, no, there's like 200 of them. You know, like out of nowhere. And I was like, holy shit, oh my god, wow. Oh, this is really cool. I should get involved locally. Get involved locally and try to make Chicago a better place. And so this way, I can feel like I'm at Burning Man without actually having to drive the 200 miles to get there or not, you know, or just more than once a year. So I decided to start an event that would bring all these different little pods they had discovered in Chicago. And they're all different types of people. Some are side trans people, some are like yoga people, some are like drinkers, you know, maker, makers people, and the fire spinning people. It didn't matter to me because, you know, I was trying to think about what, what's the common denominator between all of us, all our different groups at Burning Man. What is it? Burning Man. That's like the only thing I can think of. What's the common thread that brings us all, to, all together? And I think Burning Man is, you know, that we all just treat each other with respect and, you know, as a peer, you know, and we can learn from each other and we don't judge each other, you know. And after my third year of Burning Man, I realized that, you know, this non judgment thing allowed me to become the person I really wanted to be. And so I felt after 10 years of getting that out of Burning Man, that it was my duty to kind of bring that to other people, you know, and create situations for them to become who they should be. And um, so I grabbed a bunch of other people like me, and their little pods, and we all got together and we threw this event called Resonate. And that was in 2006. A bunch of people from Detroit came in town, and we all became best friends. Um, so, uh, that one, we weren't sure how it was going to go. Chicago didn't really have a Burning Man community. They, they weren't even aware, these pods weren't even really aware of each other so much. And so, again, this common, this common thread, Burning Man, brought us all together, even with our differences, and we had the most amazing experience. And then we just became this community. We started out with a couple hundred people, and then, then we threw the decomp in my parking lot, and that was a couple hundred people, and next year we did another resident. And 
We decided that what we would do with the money, if we made any, we just put it back in the community. We didn't think too much about it. You know, our intention was to have a great event that was representing everyone in, in, in all their facets, and that should be the focus. And if we make money, then, oh, we'll put it back into put it back into uh, the community and so on. Which started out as our steering committee, which are the people who organized and threw the first resume. And again, like I hear with other people, um, what do we do with the money? We got nine hundred dollars now. It's underneath uh, Groot's mattress or something, right? Like, you know? And now it's two thousand dollars under Groot's mattress. You know, oh my God, we're going to get in trouble. We're going to bigger, bigger, bigger. Because we're doing the right thing. If we do the right thing, we're going to exponentially grow. And that's all because we're all inclusive, and we have to be all inclusive in all the different facets of the community. We give them equal play, and it's a beautiful thing. Don't plan too much. Don't overthink it, don't micromanage. Create the space for everyone to, to flourish and empower them to do what they do. And don't try to lead them in any direction that might that in their creative output, however you want to say. But, um, so we just kept on doing that. And, you know, being all inclusive is not always easy. You know, you get like 10 people, you bring in the scene, like, oh, okay, we're all inclusive, right? Well, like three of them are total douchebags, you know, what are you going to do? You know, but the seven that you gain for dealing with three douchebags is so worth it in the end. So you've got to remain all inclusive. And the bad ones will fall by the wayside. You know what I mean? They might stick around for a couple of years and annoy people. And, or maybe they'll get over their badness and become awesome people. You know, or maybe they'll learn, ah, oh, my friends at high school are such douchebags, but now I'm with these wonderful people and I don't have to be that way anymore. I can be normal, I can be me, or what I'm supposed to be. And I've seen it happen a thousand times in, through our events. And I've seen it happen, and I've heard about it happening with people I don't even know. You know, we're changing the way people perceive themselves by just loving them and giving them that chance. And that's all you have to do. And that's our common good. So as long as we keep on doing that, we're just gonna have a beautiful life. That's it. So so a hug would be like one hug me? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah.